The illustrious Jabba bids you welcome. <laughs> I'm going to regret this. I'm Pete Mitchell. He's Peyton Jones. And this is the Church Planner Podcast. Brought to you by Church Planner Magazine. Ooga, ooga. <laughs> Hold on. I got to get ready for the podcast. Ooga, ooga. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, he's kicking straight into the ad. <laughs> Did you know that 98% of people say that they would attend church if invited by a friend? Yet only 2% of churchgoers say they're actively inviting? Reach was started to change that stat to give people a better way to invite. Reach equips congregations to invite friends in a powerful and scalable way. For every check-in on Facebook and tag on Instagram, a donation is made to a kingdom-building cause. More people hear about church from... (laughs) Stop, man. Let me get through the commercial. (laughs) More people hear about their church from friends, and more good is done around the world. It's as simple as that. Reach is offering a special promotion for Church Planner Podcast listeners to get your first month free. To get started, just visit causely.com forward slash reach and sign up using the promo code podcast. Ooh. It would have been so, it w- I could have used that every I know. episode. It was the one, I could feel it. It was the chosen one. It's because I this started. This is the one foretold about the prophecy. It's because I did my ogas. Ooga, ooga, right? You did. You yes, that was a deep barbaric ooga that crept out of your body. So, uh, in in case you're Sorry wondering if this is your first time, this is the Church Planner Podcast. I am Pete Mitchell. He is Peyton Jones, and we are sponsored by Reach. Go to Cosley.com forward slash Reach and find out more about what they got going on with the promo code yep. Podcast. Good stuff, man. So we're doing a little bit of a car cast. Wait, you, you are, wait, wait, wait. Is, is our code, is our promo code podcast? Yeah, you know what that means? That means, it means we're the only podcast they use. <laughs> I know. Either that or or they're going to lump us in with all their other <laughs> podcasts, which I'm kind of hoping <laughs> so they don't like yeah. know where their leads are coming from. See, I want my clients to know where their leads are coming from, but I don't want my advertisers to know. I want them to all think it's coming from me. Yeah. Hey, today I am in the car, everybody. I apologize. Not only is this a car cast, which always means my quality is lesser on my end, but also I have this annoying speed warning on this rental car where it it, it kind of clocks every time that I'm speeding and goes ding, 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 ding. So you're going to hear that when I speed. Where are you? I'm in Atlanta. Oh. Yeah. I bet you the weather out there is perfect. No, I, you know. Mr. California gets off going, hey, welcome to Hotland. No way am I wearing long pants and shoes like I got it tomorrow to all my meetings. But I'm wearing sandals and shorts and I get off and it's like hurricane gale winds, man, like blowing trees sideways, rain going sideways. And I was like, yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I so dig it. Today's topic before we get into our smack talk portion of which I will say right now, I've had so many things happen in the last week. I could actually do the whole show on smack talk only. Uh, Yeah. Well, okay. So we're going to talk about field training today. So save a little bit Pete, for the second half, right? (laughs) Don't be like the guy on Gattaca, you know, don't, don't be like that guy. You know, he didn't save anything for the way back. That's how he beat his brother in the swim contest. (sighs) You have no clue what I'm talking about. I do. I remember Gattaca. Exactly. Uh, Gattaca was a movie a that had nothing. Like the, the point of the movie was you are not your genetic makeup. You can outdo Correct. your genetics. That was the point of the movie. Yep. So what's the spiritual story out of Gattaca? Oh, man, there's so many. <laughs> so many. We really you should know, have done I, that podcast where we just looked at movies and. And took the, the spiritual element. We it, should. I don't remember if I mentioned Gattaca in this book. It's one of the books 
or one of the blogs I've written, I use that line where he goes, I didn't save, save anything for the way back. And right. I talk about that's, that's kind of what Paul's getting at when in Philippians, he says, strive with everything within you. I go for it as if this is the only thing that counts. So yeah, man, that there's a, there's a big lesson to pull out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Interestingly enough, man, uh, one of my assistants, Wayne, he was bringing up, this is like, I don't know, like a month ago that he really liked the uh, Superman versus Batman from the standpoint of the story of like, okay, what do you do when you have an all powerful being Superman? And if he wanted to destroy everybody, he could. Yeah. And I just thought that was really interesting because I was like, huh, because you could relate that back to God. What do you do when you got a God who could destroy everything if you wanted to because he created everything? Absolutely. And it In actually fact, made they, me they go. Spray paint. It, yeah. Go it ahead. actually made me go back and rewatch the movie because I wanted to see the whole conversation because I didn't pick up on that when I watched it. Yeah, absolutely. And the best part of that movie is when Batman screams out, why did you say Martha? No, that was my personal favorite. The best part of, part of the movie is when it ended because I thought it was horrible and I uh, just wanted to. Anyway, yeah, I didn't like it. Yeah, it wasn't that great. It had its moments. They finally got Batman wrong or right. They just put him <laughs> in the wrong film. <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't get Batman right. They had the wrong person playing Batman. No, he was all right as Batman. No, gotta, he I wasn't. I got to differ with you there. He was all right. He um <sighs> he pulled know. it off. And really, to be honest, they did a Frank Miller Batman. And I dig with that. I've always said, though, if I were going to do Batman, if, if you left it to me to cast Batman, it would have been Dolph Lundgren a hundred times over. Dolph Lundgren? Heck yeah, man. Hmm. I do Batman in a stinking, I don't know what accent he's got. I just remember him from Rocky Four. That'll always oh, be dude. the movie that Dolph Lundgren is is from for me. I must break you because I'm Batman. But if he dies, you can just see those two lines going together. You know what I'm talking about? Welcome to Smack Talk, everybody. If you're wait, here wait, for church planning goodness, if welcome he, to Smack Talk. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Gordon, you're gonna kill him, Batman. Oh, this is great. We could write the script right now. Dolph Lundgren is Batman. I love it. Oh, he'd be so good. But, you know, you have to cover up his accent. All you right. You shouldn't be doing none of that. So I got all kinds of funny stories for you. One of yeah. which, well, I'm going to tell you two. I'll make, them, I'll make them short. But they have to do with, uh, with the Charger. So this, folks, is what we like to call Talking Charger. Oh, okay. I thought you said the Jar Jar. No. Okay, no. the Charger. All no, right. Jar Jar never existed in my world. So Car, car casts are a little bit tough at times. They can be, they can, especially on Skype. So, um, so for those of you who haven't been listening to the podcast, I got uh, the Charger. Uh, now, I guess it was uh, the end of March, so a couple of months back, and uh, and I got it because it's a family car, right? At least that's how I sold my wife. I'm like, look, it's got four doors, and we got two kids, so therefore it's a family car. Let's get the Charger. I didn't want an SUV. I'm just not an SUV kind of a guy yet. I wanted to put that out as long as I could. So uh, last week, we went to uh, Tahiti. We drove to Tahiti, of course, because uh, we were going to Tahiti Village, Las Vegas, not the uh, the Tahiti that everyone just thought I meant. And um, so we had to take the Charger, right? So, you know, we're driving out there. It's like a four-hour four hour trip. That car, you remember when you asked me before I bought it, you're like, what kind of gas mileage does it get? And I go, who cares? Because... <laughs> You right. Don't, you don't buy that car for gas mileage. I normally get like 13 miles to the gallon cuz I only do like city driving. I rarely even get on the freeway. Right. And so this was like my first trip where it's like, all right, you know, I'm going someplace. I'm going to see what kind of gas mileage I really get. I averaged for the entire trip 26 miles to the gallon. Twice as good. I averaged 28 on the way back. Like it was 24 on the way out there, 28 on the way back. So it averaged 26. That car is made for the freeway. It's awesome. That's rad. It was, I, I couldn't believe, I've never had a car do that good. Cause you know, I never get, <laughs> I never get green vehicles. Let me just put it like that. That's not the type of vehicles that I buy. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it's got pretty good gas mileage. I, mean, I want one of those hybrids, man. I do want one of those. Why? Now. I want to charge her more. Don't get me wrong, but I, just, I want to buy someone's like. I just told you on. you could get twenty six miles to the gallon. 
I know. I got I know. to well, Vegas. Of course I'd want a charger. But I got I'm to not. Vegas and I had half a tank of gas left. That I was like, what? I'm in Vegas and I got half a tank of gas left. That's rad, man. Oh, it was incredible. It was awesome. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. So here is the funny story that I wanted to tell you. I've been waiting on my personalized plates, right? Because I got to have some personalized plates. And I really right. wanted the uh, the old school black and yellow California plates that they let you get now. They're the 1960s throwback. Because my car is gray and black, so it, it would look like really sharp on it. So they finally came in. And my wife goes and she picks them up from the DMV. And she comes back and she hands them to me. And I kid you not, man. Did I tell you what my plates were going to say? No. So my plates say Profit Hacker because the name of my company. Are you kidding me? No, no, no. So they say Profit That's Hacker. Rad. Well, the name of my company is that. Profit Hacking Solutions, right? So I'm like, hey, yeah. I'm a Profit Hacker. So obviously too many letters can't fit it on there. You got to abbreviate it. So what do I abbreviate? Yeah. P-R-F-T-H-K-R. Profit right. Hacker, right? Fits. Right, right. My wife hands me the plates. And I don't know what makes us think about this because it's me, Wayne, and my wife sitting in my office. And I'm like, wait a second. If you're a girl and you're driving my car, do you know what those plates could also be interpreted to say? No. Do I want to know this? <laughs> it's the perfect Professor, abbreviation. Professor to car? It's the perfect abbreviation for perfect hooker. No! Yes! I kid you not! Perfect hooker. Wow. Imagine the shock when they pull up next to you at a stoplight. So that's, I was like, well, this actually ensures that my wife will never drive my car. She doesn't want people to think she's the perfect hooker. Oh my gosh, dude. How funny is that, man? Is that oh not like perfect? Gosh. It actually, now, now that I see it, I can't unsee it. <laughs> I know. It actually, I, me it too. actually fits the other one better. You need to change your tags, man. I can't. It takes too long to get new plates. I'm stuck with these. Yeah, you kind of blew it. <laughs> I don't think, I actually think it's funny because I used to uh, refer to myself as a marketing whore. So I, I'm kind of like, well, you know, perfect hooker. Okay. You know, the DMV wouldn't let me put marketing whore on there. So there you go. Oh, they wouldn't? Well, I'm sure they wouldn't let you use the word whore. Wow. I mean, I don't, I didn't ask them, but I just kind of assumed. <laughs> so. Wow. I know it's one wow, of those things Pete. you can't unsee when you see it. I can't unsee it now that you've said it. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. You know. So, okay. So next time we pull up to a church planning thing, <laughs> I can't ride with you anymore. It's like, yeah, I'm getting that out of this car. It's a perfect fucker. I'm saying. What's right. the deal? I mean, if there was a C and PRFT, you know, PREFCT, then yeah. like, there's no chance. There's no chance. You, yeah. you, that's what you're saying. So there's a slight wow. chance, but yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is crazy, man. I know, but you can't unsee it. Like once you see it in your head, that's, I look at my car now and I go, it's a perfect hooker. We should move on to the next topic. I'm uncomfortable now. <sighs> that's too bad. <laughs> so that's, that was the best of my stories. I got another story, but I don't know that I'm ready to tell it yet. Why? I don't know. By the way, your car is telling you you're driving too fast. I know. And you know what? I'm in like, I'm on a surface street now. So it's like, great. This Who did you be a rent trip. from? Is it like uh, thrifty rental or you something? Know, who I always do. It's the car they gave me. They gave me a, a Ford or a Chevy. No, but who? Chevy What's the company? Something. It's Avis. I always rent through Avis. So in other words, don't rent from Avis in Atlanta. No, none they put of their this... cars. This is this is like specific to this model of car. Oh my gosh. There's got to be a way to turn that off. Uh, you know, I've tried. I have been sitting here hitting buttons that look like it might be it, but uh, yeah, it's not working. Wow. Might, might need to just pull the old manual out later. So, uh, hey, oh what's new God. with you? Not much, man. I got no smack talk. I've been in Baltimore all last week, and now I'm in, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I got no smack talk, man. My house is torn up. My, uh, yeah, yeah, nothing. I got nothing. You got nothing, huh? All right. Well, then we should probably get nothing, into our man. topic. Well, no, let's tell your story, man. You got a story, too. Come on. No, nah, I'm not ready to tell it yet. 
<laughs> You've been telling me all week. <laughs> I can't wait to tell you the story. No, the w- story I couldn't wait to tell you was the license plate story. That was the one I couldn't the wait charger. for. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's funny, man. That's yeah. the one that you were. That's funny. That I wanted Why to wait until we to- were. On is the this podcast. other one? Does it involve therapy? N- no. Are, are, are did, is it is it an email related? No, I, well, yes and no. It's not a negative <laughs> about. Uh, so, for those of you who are just joining us for the the first time, what Peyton's talking about is uh, <laughs> we used to have a section, and by used to, I mean it lasted <laughs> all like one episode. Uh, you know, Pete Mitchell gets hate mail from pastors or something like that is what we called it because I get a lot of uh, hate mail from uh, pastors who look at the Bivo inner circle or uh, read our ads on Facebook and feel, you know, like they're, they're compelled to, uh, uh, to share with me how fallen I am as a person. And, um, yes. And that, and by the way, guys, sort of thing. thank you for helping me out. I've been telling Pete these things for years. I appreciate that. I now have someone else in my corner telling him things, <laughs> hoping that eventually he'll listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's been a long, lonely road to hold by myself. You know what? Everyone's gonna think that you really have been telling me that. I have not. Okay, disclaimer. This uh this is my way of making fun of people and give a hard time to Pete. Yeah, exactly. And making fun of Pete at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> so no, here's here's I'll I'll tell you the story. It's not I don't think it's it's not like a a funny story, but this is what happened. So last week, I don't know, it was like Monday or Tuesday, one of those mornings. I mean, I normally get like, I would say two to three hate mail or texts a day from pastors. Right. So that's just kind of like the running norm. And um, so this one morning I'm sitting in my, uh, my chair uh, in the living room and I was just like, I was done. I'm like, dude, these guys are like, the biggest jerks in the world. Why am I busting my hump trying to help these guys? Cause this is what I get from these guys. I mean, this is ridiculous. Right. So the thought goes through my head. I'm like, you know what? What if I just, I'm going to shut down all of the advertising and I'm just going to totally a hundred percent focus on the guys and gals we got in the program currently. And I'm like, I'm just going to help them. And forget everyone new, don't need them, don't need to waste my time on them. You know, that was the thought going through my head. And I was like, well, you know, I'll wait. Basically, you felt what every pastor feels about every two weeks. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. With his church or a church plant. (laughs) Especially with the (laughs) church plant, right? So um, I was like, "Uh, you know what, before I turn everything off, I'll talk to Peyton about it. And I, I knew we didn't have any calls scheduled until like Friday or typical Friday call. And, uh, and I, I, okay. So to give everyone the proper setting for this, they need to understand a little bit of backstory here. You and I had an issue that came up. I don't even remember how long ago it was. What was it? A year ago, two years ago. I don't even remember. Do you remember? What issue was it? It was when we got mad at each other. Oh, that was early. That was like 2000. It was right at the beginning of jump school. I remember that. It was like 2014, wasn't it? I don't, I, I don't know. Every day kind Could of have been 2015, together. but it was, it was a couple of years ago now. Yeah. So you and I, we it, admittedly, I started the whole thing. I, I did something that deeply offended you, didn't realize I'd offended you, and things spiraled out of control. Like it got pretty bad between the two of us over like a week period, and you were on vacation and stuff like that. And um, in fact, at one point, you had thought, hey, you know what? We've, we've, fixed everything. And I was still like ticked. I was still mad. And I specifically remember this is the first time in my life this had ever happened where I woke up one morning and all of a sudden the thought just went through my head. And what bugs me to this day is I couldn't remember if it was first person or third person. Like I, like I just, I'm curious, was it a thought that, you know, went through my head because my head was just thinking about it or was it something God was trying to say to me? Cause I never had like the whole audible, right. You know, some of the people we've had on the podcast, like, Oh, you know, God told me this. I'm like, Wh- whatever, dude, I don't even know what that means. Right. Cause I don't, right. I, I've never had the audible thing. Right. So, right. but the thought that went through my head was, um, he doesn't understand what he's doing to you. And 
not that you were doing anything negative to me, but yeah. all what it meant to me was, oh, wait a second. Peyton's not intentionally trying to hurt me. He literally doesn't know that his actions right now, how they're affecting me. And in right. that second, man, right then, all of the anger left me. Because I was like, dude, this is not intentional. He he He's not meaning to hurt me at all. He's not meaning to be mean to me. He just doesn't understand how what he's doing is affecting me. And that's why right. I say, you know, I was curious if it was first person or third person. I just for curiosity's sake, right? But I remember it was like the weirdest thing ever because that thought comes through my head. And then like the next instant, I'm not mad anymore. And this is after yeah. a week, week and a half of us like we were pretty, pretty ticked at each other. And in fact, your wife was like, you better not get mad at Pete or something like that, which I think yeah. she's now yeah, my, my favorite person. My wife, that, that's the thing is my, <laughs> my wife is like, she always tells me, she goes, you better always get along with Pete. If you and Pete fall out, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> I love it. Which is funny, right? Because like, you know, my, my, my wife, you guys have to understand, like, it's funny because my wife has crazy good discernment and I watch everyone else read Pete wrong in life. You know, like they, they get the total wrong end of the stick with Pete a lot. And my wife, who's got crazy discernments, like, Hey, all I can say is this could happen to you. That could happen. These people could get mad at you. You could lose this contract, but Pete, and it's funny. Cause I told her, you know, I tell people, I go, the funny thing is, is Pete and I really don't, you know, all these years, we've never made a, a penny from what we do. We just do it for the love of the game. And, uh, and well, I do wife, make money now. Like, We're the, we got the Bible in a circle, which is starting to bring in money. So well, now full, now? yeah, full, full, full disclosure. I don't want people to think, you know, oh, they're no, not, but they're for all not, these years, yeah. like we dude, we've been tracking together for almost seven years. Think of that. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. You know, we started the podcast, what, 2013, but we hadn't been talking for, for quite a while before that. So right. I mean, that's crazy, man. Yeah. So anyways. Yeah. So, so anyway, that was the first time it happened. And so that same day where I was like, that's it. I, you know, I'm just going to shut everything down. I'm just going to focus on the people who are in the Bible inner circle. I'm going to totally just pull out all the stops, whatever I can give them. I'm going to give them, I'm going to help those guys forget everybody new. Like that was a thought that went through my head. And, um, like right after that, I had this other thought again. I can't remember if it was first person or third person, just because I'm curious to, you know, no, I, I'm not saying that God like put a thought in my head. I don't know. Right. I have no idea, but I'll right. tell you what happened. The thought that went through my head was, isn't it possible that Satan is using these pastors to tear you down? So you won't do this. Yep. And Absolutely. I kid you not like the next second, I'm like, huh, it's entirely possible. And like again, the the frustration, everything gone, and literally since then, almost no negative emails or comments have come into me. Huh. Uh, we had that one like over the weekend that I showed you, and, I, and even that one, I was like laughing at because the guy was like putting all these memes on our Facebook ad, and <laughs> I was just like laughing. I'm like, wow, dude, yeah. you, you got some issues, man. I mean. Well Here's, here's the thing, man. Like, honestly, like I get, I get either emails or calls or texts daily from church planners that have somehow found us through the podcast or the magazine. And, and the amazing thing is, is again, it goes back to my wife. I don't tell my wife all that. I just think she is very discerning. She recognizes that the Lord is in our friendship and partnership. But, you know, it's funny that you say this because just Thursday, my email that goes out to our, if you guys sign up for our email list, uh, both Pete and I send out emails every week that are, you know, encouragements or insights or whatever. And Pete will tell you in a second how to sign up for that. But, um, but the, the funny thing is, man, we, uh, just Thursday, the one that went out was about being in a battle. Mm. And I mentioned a movie I'd seen called the man in the camo jacket. Um, and gosh, man, that would make a great podcast. We should just, I'm going to scrap and table my, uh, I haven't announced the topic yet. Today. No, we so, did. We did. We did. Yeah. Very we should, beginning. we should change our topic to, um, <laughs> to talk about spiritual warfare, man. Cause here's the thing, right? Like this is where, this is what's uncanny about this is that Thursday I talked about spiritual warfare for the first time in a long time. I watched this, this movie called man in the camel jacket. So there's a guy 
there's a band called The Alarm that was kind of a band like U2. Never made it as big, but for the war tour, which was U2's big, you know, first big tour here. And they opened. And so The Alarm was a, a band where the lead singer, they were Welsh. And so, of course, I know them. And, um, you know, sat, sat in his kitchen having tea, you know. Um, but he, uh, he, you know, he's a man of faith, loves the Lord. And he bought a camo jacket because he felt, um, he had gone to a, a, a pastor back when he got diagnosed with brain cancer and the pastor gave him a prophecy and said, you're going to make it through this. Um, his dad had just died of a stroke and his sister had just died of a stroke. Um, she died at, at her dad's graveside. Uh, on the day of the funeral, which is great. Right. And then he gets diagnosed brain cancer, like within a year. So it was terrible. And he's been struggling with this for years, but when he first got it back in the nineties, um, this brain cancer, they told him, Hey, you know, you're, you're going to make it. The guy said, but he gave him a word and said, but you're going to have to fight and you're going to have to fight like you've never fought before. Hmm. And so he started wearing um, and this is how, you know, he's gone back into, um, you know, where the, where the tumor resurfaces, if he's in any kind of remission or not, is he wears camo clothes again. So all of a sudden you'll see him put the camo clothes on again. And what it is, it's a reminder that I'm in a battle and I need to fight. And this guy, he'll do chemo one day. He's one of my heroes. And then he'll do over the next two days the three tallest peaks in Wales in a 48 hour period. That's like a thing over there. And he'll raise millions of dollars for charity. He'll pop up on the BBC guys, raising all kinds of money for bone cancer. Um, he's actually going to be a guest on hardcore. Yeah. I, I reached out recently and said, Hey, cause I know him. Would you come on to the, the podcast? But I use that as a picture because it is a spiritual thing, even though on the, it, the documentary is called man in the camo jacket. And he doesn't really go into it in depth about, hey, this, I feel like, you know, I was told by the Lord to really fight, but that's what it is. And it just really inspired me that here's a guy who's got insurmountable, insurmountable odds and he just arms himself for the fight every single day. And so Paul tells us to do in Ephesians, you know, where he goes, hey, guys, if you do all this crud. Sorry, Peyton Jones paraphrase. This is why they don't let me translate the Bible. <laughs> if if you if you do all this crap I just talked about in chapters one through five, um, basically, you know, he just because he talks about walking love, walking the light, and uh, and then he goes, you know, he then he all of a sudden changes his language from walking to standing. In other words, like you need to make your last stand here because if you do all this, the enemy is coming in to deliver a blow. He is going to come in to knock you over, to knock you down as hard as he can. And like that old missionary who said, you know, the, the, you know, he, he was writing a letter he had malaria and he was all mad. And he was like, Hey, uh, I don't understand why I came out here and gave my whole life. I was going to translate the scripture in the jungle, trans, you know, translate it for all these natives and get converted. And here I am dying of malaria and he was dying. And the guy told him, he goes, uh, the pastor that wrote back to him said, you can always tell that the, the strength of the blow you delivered to the enemy by how hard he hits back. Hmm. And so I think Paul, Paul knew that, right? Paul was like, hey, you know, like Paul talked about Satan opposed us, but he's talking about people. And then he mentions, uh, you know, this is an interesting bit of theology. I don't think we grasp too often where he goes, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, you know, but against the powers and the spiritual forces of wickedness in high places. Paul literally is talking about people that opposed him. And then he goes, but ultimately, you know, the, these people were used by Satan and they, some of them might've been believers. I mean, I've definitely had, you know, believers used by the enemy and guess what? I got to raise my hand and say, and somewhere out there, there's someone that, uh, the enemies use Peyton Jones right. to get at too. I hate to say it, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure it is true. I mean, <clears throat> because like you and I talked about this with some of the things that these pastors will come back with and they'll say to us, 
And you had a great line one time. You're like, the part that breaks my heart is I get a little glimpse inside their church by how they're responding to us. And, right. you know, I'm sure they're not all like that. I'm sure it's not always like that. Like one of the things that, that I've said is some of them, when they reach out to me, I can hear the financial frustration in their voice, so to speak. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember seeing that in my own father, who is a pastor. Right. And I remember so clearly, he never, never talked about money with us. My, my parents never really talked about that, but I could see the frustration. And so sometimes That's these guys it, reach man. out. And I remember with this one guy, I go, look, just so you know, I can hear the financial frustration in your email. I get where you're coming from, but yeah. right now you're in a bad spot and you are toxic and you're tearing me down and you and I don't even know each other. And that's just, it, man. Yeah. And we, you know, in all honesty, I mean, good look. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I should tell this story or not, but I can tell you what I, I had a, a guy outside of a conference I was at, um, and he, he stopped me. I don't know if I ever shared this story. If I did stop me, but he, he, he stopped me. He was protesting outside of this um, hotel for this big convention. And I remember just, you know, it didn't bother me, but um, you know, my wife uh, first, we walked by and he said something like, um, Hey, don't you, don't you care that they, uh, they, they, they sexually prey on people or something like that, that there's, you know, there's sexual predators working there or something like that. And it was something about some woman had a complaint and all, on and on anyways. Um, and then, and then my wife goes, Hey, I got to go, um, go do something. And so I'm standing there waiting outside. I'm actually waiting for an Uber lift and while she's checking in and, um, and I said, okay. And then, uh, while I'm there, the guy turns at me and he goes, do you know anyone who's ever been sexually assaulted? And I just, something snapped in me. You know, like that's not a good question to ask anybody, because if I do know somebody, you, you've just brought everything to the surface mm. of someone I love who's been hurt. And who the heck are you and how dare you? And I'm telling you, man, I, I, I didn't start yelling at him, but he, he got some of the reason that Jesus saved Peyton Jones mm. um, right then. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. it was like, I remember one time he's like, whoa. Whoa, bro, where's all this aggression coming from? And I said, you're being aggressive. I'm just better at it than you are. And he's like, oh, uh, you know, and it was, it was just good that, you know, <laughs> no one who knew me happened to be walking by, by at that moment. But we it's all good that your moments. boss wasn't walking by at that moment. <laughs> yeah, perhaps I was actually going to meet my boss. But but the reality is at that moment, I I, I, I tore into him, man. I tore it. He actually said. uh I, w I won't tell you what he said, but he got scared. I, I was in no way physically threatening him at all, but, but well, that's because let's, let's face it. No one's going to be physically threatened when they see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andrew always tells me, she goes, Hey, you got the mean face again, you know, get rid of the mean face, lose the mean face. And so like, I don't aggress on people. Like if I'm in a car and some lady yells at me, I'm never aggress towards a, a female or anything like that. But that day, that, that kid, I just, I don't know, man. It was just like, you know, and I, and I guess that's not typical behavior for me, but like one of the guys I used to train with, he, he would always say, everybody gets to have a bad day from time to time. You know, we read our Bible and these guys all have bad days. So some of these guys, we just may have caught them at the wrong day at the wrong time. Right. And we were in their line of fire because for some reason, dang it, we pushed the button and these may be guys that, that really love the Lord. And I love it when some of them come back and go, hey, man, I'm sorry. I was out of line. And and it's usually when you're gracious. I mean, we've talked about this, but again, I just think, you know, so many of us are in a spiritual battle. And the enemy is always looking to exploit those weaknesses. And the reason I bring it up is my, my weakness is not, you know, it's funny because I don't look at porn. I don't, you know, I, I, I travel. I'm, I'm, I don't look at anything when I'm on the road. You know what I mean? Like I, I keep my nose clean, but I know that's a lot of guys struggle. 
you know, and I'm, I'm not judging guys for that. I think I'm a little atypical in this, but my struggle is probably more alarming to me in many ways because my struggle, it, you know how Paul says the guy ought not be violent. Um, I'm not violent, but I, I think, you know, bef- before I became a Christian, that was, that was a big problem for me. Mm. There's not a lot of anger. Right. And that's the thing for me that I'm always, you know, it, I'm always keeping in check and, and Satan would love that. Right. Um, I remember telling my first church plan, don't be surprised if one day, you know, you, you look in the paper and I'm, I'm in jail because I hit someone, you know, like that's my struggle. Just being transparent and real with my people. That's, that's my struggle, you know? And, uh, and I think Paul had that temper too, you know, but Satan will always look for those places to exploit. And so guys, just, just be aware, you know, and if you're, you know, I always like to tell guys that if you're, if you are in some kind of, if you have something that's like a temptation view, it's funny. Cause I left that. I went and met my boss. First thing I did is I went and said, Hey, can you pray for me? And I told him everything that just happened and said, Hey, will you pray for me? And he laughed and he gave me a hug and he said, let's pray. Boom. He said, I'm sorry you're going through a rough time. And by the way, you know what it was? You know what the trigger was? What? My mom. It was mm-hmm. when I first heard that my mom was not doing well. My mom had just gone into the hospital. And I, I wasn't doing so high. You know? Yeah. So, you know, that's that's the way it is. So we're always in a battle. And Satan would have loved to have just destroy me on that day. And uh, I, I didn't go far enough for him to do that. But man, I, sometimes you just feel like you're a hair's breadth away from, from, from doing something really stupid. So, you know, that's what Satan's trying to do is take us down. And it's funny too, because all it takes for us is to, to, you know, give these guys like in return and then boom, it's all over the internet. And same with you guys too, man, if it tempers your thing. And I love that it's Paul's because when Paul's in the, in front of the, the, the Sanhedrin, the high priest goes strike him and, the guy hits him on the face and Paul goes, God, I'll strike you, you whitewash. <laughs> he just immediately latches out. And that guy goes, Hey man, what gives talking to high priest like that? And Paul goes, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know that was a high priest. You know, he, he real it reigns himself back in because suddenly he just, all of his anger comes out, you know, rather than you know, just like me out in front of that hotel, you know, he right. immediately, God's going to smite you, you punk, you know? Right. Yeah, and as I've said many a time, that is without a doubt uh, my shortfall. I remember somebody came back to us <laughs> and was like, hey, I just needed to apologize for uh, what I said to you guys. I mean, and how you answered it, it was so gracious. It, it That's what made me, uh, you know, reevaluate what I had said. <laughs> and this was on Facebook. And I was like, oh, then I'm sure Peyton is the one who responded to you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, that that is without a doubt what I struggle with because I just, you know, the hair is up on the back of my neck. And it's like, oh, you want a piece of me? All right, you, me, after school, three o'clock, meet in the playground, right? I'm ready to oh, go. Oh, yeah, three o'clock high, baby, buddy Ravel. <laughs> I'm just telling you, <laughs> man. The brass knuckles. That's the thought that goes through my head. It's like, let's go. Oh, you think you're so hot, Mr. Self Righteous Pastor? It's on. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like. I ain't impressed by you. I can pee next to anybody. <laughs> my dad was a pastor. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, man. I just, ah, uh, that's why for me, that's, rad. That, that's why when that guy said that, I'm like, oh, I guarantee you Peyton is the one who responded to you because well, it is true, man. Soft dancer turns away rap. You know, yeah. there are times where you have to be really straight with people and, you know, and just boom, you know, it's kind of like, did I, did I mention about Lloyd Jones that time that, uh, the guy was going, hallelujah. Hey man. And, uh, he was screaming. He kept like giving hallelujahs and affirmations and amens while Lloyd Jones was trying to preach. And at one point, the doctor asked him, he goes, he, he stops and says, you right there, the loud one. You want people to get saved? And he goes, hey, man, yes, I do. Hallelujah. And Lloyd Jones goes, then shut up. <laughs> 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 but, you know, <laughs> that's, that's not how you always respond to people, you know, for that guy. That's what he needed right then. And, uh. Man, I've, I've had to say some things that were difficult, but most of the time, 
99 percent of the time okay 90 okay maybe 80 percent of the time <laughs> oh okay okay change, can it's still time to change my answer no i'm teasing but uh i, I normally will uh you know respond softer and that's why i have that rule of i wait 24 hours normally to respond to something that's you know confrontational because i i need to think and pray and get alone with that you know yeah that's a good rule to have i wish you would have shared that with me before <laughs> <laughs> well you know my mentor one of my mentors in ministry he said uh he goes, uh, and I jokingly call him my corrupter because there's not many things he said that did not completely wreck what I thought about everything. But he, uh, I'll never forget him saying to me, he says, uh, he goes, normally what you should do is you should write everything out that you want to say to someone in a letter. And once you've written it out, it's your masterpiece, delete it and then rewrite it. Right. And he goes, what that does is it expels all of the venom. But uh, for me, 24 hours is just as good. I don't spend all that effort. I just wait. Well, that's that's exactly what uh, what my assistant Wayne said that he likes to do is the whole Abraham Lincoln, write the letter, stick it in the drawer, and don't actually send it to someone. And yeah, because um, I, I mean, I I would find that <laughs> like like I shared on one of the episodes. Remember the guy who was like. Uh, I was going to subscribe, but you know, now you sent me too many emails <laughs> and I told yeah. you, I like took a snapshot of my bank account and I was going to send it to him and go, <laughs> Oh, I'm really, I'm crying about you not signing. And then I, you know, like I catch myself and, and because I typed it out, then I, I erase it. And then the next one comes a little bit softer. And then I go, yeah, that's still too harsh. And then I erase it and I come back. And so yeah. it, it does, it absolutely helps to actually I t I write this stuff. I told the story a couple of weeks ago. I told the story a couple of weeks ago where I was like, I had crafted the masterpiece response to this guy. I mean, just some Facebook troll who came, came funny enough, he came against one of the guys on our on our Bible inner circle. And I just, you know, I jumped in there. Oh and, yeah, and, yeah. 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 And he was such a troll. Um, and he was such a, a theological know-it-all troll. And, um, and you know, it, it's funny to me because I studied theology so many years, got my MA in theology and didn't really, uh, I, it just doesn't frighten me. You know what I mean? It, it I'm like, yeah, I've been there, done that, but, um, that's cool. You're, you're still really impressed by how much, you know, that's rad. Um, good for you. But at the end of the day, it, it was kind of like, yeah, you know what? And I just mentioned, Hey, maybe you should like try being a shepherd right now to him. And, and anyways, so I had this beautiful thing crafted out and I, it was almost an audible, wasn't audible, but it was like, I, it felt like the Holy spirit whispering. No, no. <laughs> No. And I, and, and, and it was like, but Lord, this is so good. And he so deserves it. And this would, would Lord, you know, this would go down in the annals of Facebook history <laughs> as like best comebacks ever <laughs> in like multiple paragraphs. And the Lord's like, no, but I just, you know, it was funny because when I let go, it was like, Lord, this is you, you have this guy. Um, and it was funny because, you know, People, I get notices when people, you know, and it's people like comment, like, I agree with Peyton or someone liking it. And I go back there and he had stripped all of his uh, venomous comments out. So obviously the Lord had, either he had gotten embarrassed because it, it really did kind of look like a moron. You know, right. I hate to say it, but then at the same time, um, you know, he, he perhaps he actually got convicted. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know what happened, right. whether it was pride or humility that made him take it off. But well, and see, the worst part about that situation is what started it was it, you and I knew the backstory of what yeah. was going on in this guy's life and yeah. seeing, uh, in, in his case, seeing a pastor do one of the most atrocious things a pastor can do to another human. And he right. was just, he was, he was just spewing his own. And I think it was like almost an innocent and it wasn't innocent, but I mean, it wasn't, 
it wasn't as bad of a comment as this guy made it out to be. He was just like, hey, yeah. pastors are not high on my list right now. And yeah. who can blame them after seeing what another pastor did? Right. I mean, it's kind of like when someone goes, and then the hey, cover up on top of that by other, yeah. like, I mean, it, it just, was a whole, yeah, yeah. just, uh, just kept going down the rabbit's hole. Right. I mean, but I mean, at the same time, you know, I, I look at stuff like that and obviously his pain was justified. It's justified right. after seeing what he saw. I, you can understand someone being upset and, you know, I kind of look at that too. And I look at Christians in general. I mean, you and I have talked about this for years on this podcast, you know, Christians, I mean, myself included in this can be real jerks <laughs> to people, yep. especially sure. when yeah. it comes against, you know, Oh, you know what? You're a Democrat. Oh, well, you know, you're, you're just going to hell in a handbasket. In fact, uh, two Sundays ago, the guy who spoke at our church, um, He's a pastor at like the the mothership church, and uh, our pastor's on sabbatical right now. So he was there, and and uh, and he was talking about some magazine. He goes, "Yeah, I, I told my daughter she should read this magazine." She said, uh, "Dad, I can't read it because it's it's so uh, you know there's too much Republican stuff in it." And he goes, "Well, I'm a Democrat, and I still like it." And and then he looks at everybody and he goes, "I know what you're wondering." How can I be a Democrat and a Christian at the same time? And he goes, well, I'm making it work somehow. <laughs> and it just was like hilarious because you know that's what people were thinking in that moment, right? Like, how can you be a Democrat and a Christian at the same time? And my, my point of this is Christians, we have done enough to tarnish our own name. Yeah. And we need to make the steps. And I'm, I'm preaching to the choir on this one, right? Because I, I got... I got the same, well, probably not the same anger issues that you've got, but I am still very much the, I want to fight. And because I am not impressed with people being pastors, because I'm the son of a son of a Baptist pastor, you know, like it, <laughs> Say it, like a curse word, Pete. <laughs> it doesn't impress me that you, you know, studied theology. It doesn't impress me that you lead a big church. It's like, whatever, dude, I, I have seen behind the curtain I know that you are just as human as everybody else, and I want to fight, right? And in right. the whole point, I think that that you're making here, at least one of the points, is that we have to um, we have to check ourselves, right? We gotta we gotta put ourselves yeah, in. That's check. a point. And that is a point. Yeah. yeah. Because because the thing is is that we always want to see ourselves as the good guy, and that's yeah. that's where we get so insane. Is if you look at these guys, kind of like you said, like where the Lord is like, hey, this guy might just be in a in a hard, you know, going through a hard time. These pastors, man, we don't know which their church might have just split. You know, they might have just had someone ripping them to shreds over nothing and they just don't know what hit them. And then they turn around or sometimes people misunderstand what we're actually saying. Like they think that because we're promoting bivocational ministry, that what we're saying is we're coming down on guys that are blessed enough to be supported full time by their church. We're not, I mean, Paul makes that argument, but what we're saying is, Hey guys, this is, this is legit. And it's probably the way the future is going. I mean, it just simply is the way the future is going. Not, not even being, uh, you know, balanced about, I mean, it is the way it's going and, and just, you know, those kinds of things. But really when you read the Bible, we don't get to be the good guy. You know, we just don't. I don't get to be, and I, I love how Matt Chandler said where he goes, you're not David in this story. He goes, you know, you're, you're not, you're not David in all these stories. Um, and, and when we are David, even if you go, well, I am David, like I'm told, well, David totally blows it man, mm. and all of us blow it. And that's why this whole thing has to be grace. You know, I often think about my own struggle. I often think about this, that there are times where when somebody does that and I'm going there and I knew, I knew at that point it was my issue. I did look for the guy again and I did, you know, I thought I'll reach out to him and apologize. Cause I was, I was, even though he, and I would just say to him, Hey man, I, I wouldn't ask that question of anyone. You caught me on a bad day. Normally I would have ignored you and walked, but you know, don't ask those questions of people. Um, I know you're paid to be provocative and this and that, but you're going to get hurt, man. 
And, you know, you're lucky you encountered me because if you encountered me before, I would have punched you, you know? And, uh, and, and so the, the reality is he, um, he caught me on a bad day and, you know, but, but we all have those, you know, and the Lord is kind of, I think with, with all of us, even, even for you guys as church planners, you know, you gotta be real with that. You gotta let your people know they're so close up to you that they need to see that and they need to hear that. Um, one thing I would say is when you're leading congregations, let them know you're human, let them know you struggle. You know, as I'm, as I'm sharing this today, I know that in the back of my head is kind of like, um, you know, uh, don't, don't, uh, share all this because this is really personal private information, but I hope what I'm modeling here and what Pete's modeling is we're human and thank God for grace. And that's not an excuse. Like I, I often think of my struggle and I think if I'm reacting on a bad day, like it did to that kid, I'm reacting because there's something in me that's not right. You know, regardless of what he does, I should be living by the spirit. Mm. You know, I should be yielding everything over to the Lord and my behavior that day should have been different. Um, and again, I think the enemy was out there just, I, cause I can't tell you how close I came to actually punching him. Mm. Um, I really wanted to, he wouldn't have known that, but I, I think he sent some, that's why I was getting a little nervous, but I wasn't like lifting my fists or I didn't make any steps of violence towards him. Um, but I think he felt like my anger, you know, and, and was like, Whoa, you know, I might've messed with the wrong dude today. Right. And, um, you know, the, the, the reality is that, um, on those days, I always think back to that, you know, like I'll go in, I'll go, what was it that, you know, kind of messed with me and I'll go back and I'll reverse engineer it and go, okay, Lord, there's an area here. There's an area that's not submitted to you. There's an area here where I felt boom, boom, boom. And for, for me, I have to take those. It might be a hatred towards millennials, you know, which I don't have, but you know, it could be, he was a millennial. I got to look at that. Do I have this resentment towards kids his age? If I do, then that, that needs to be taken to Jesus. Or do I have, you know, um, you know, do I have some insecurity or do I have, do I, did I have to prove myself? You know, uh, those are all things you got to take apart and look at, Right. you know, so I know we're getting long here, aren't we? No, no. I was just actually thinking, yeah, I don't think I do like millennials. Ah, that's so <laughs> rad. <laughs> actually, no, that's not true. Because actually, one of my business partners is a millennial. I work with Jimbo a lot. We've, we've got a program that we do together. And uh, and he's actually heard me say this. Uh so one of the, the groups that I work with are auto detailers. So they detail cars and obviously boats, stuff like that. And it's, it's really sad. And yet the irony is just crazy. The detailers are the coolest group of people I work with. Um, I, I shouldn't let me back that up. Not of the people I work with, but of the people who don't buy. I've literally only had one guy be a jerk and it's like, wow, look at the difference between detailers and pastors and pastors are the ones who are supposed to be playing at a different level, you know? And it's just, uh, it's, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. That's why I, I, I kid you not, man. It was like that time when that thought went through my head, oh, Peyton doesn't even realize what he's doing. It was like that where all of a sudden just instantly the anger left me is like, as soon as I had that thought of, you know, couldn't this be Satan's way of getting at you? So that mm -hmm. way you won't do this and you won't help. I these remember pastors you saying out. that to me. I remember you saying that to me. And I remember thinking, whoa, you know, I'm so used to, to asking other people that question. And you asked me, you were like, Hey man, could it be like, could it just be that maybe Satan is, is trying to like, get us to not work together. Oh, I totally think that like when that happened, yeah. I was like, wow. Okay. There was, there was something supernatural going on, like feeding the fire between us. Because yeah. as soon as that thought went through my head, it was gone. It was totally yeah. gone. I was like, and it pushed it's my, not that thing at that time, pushed one of my buttons. And I remember telling you, I did like, when we got together, I had to tell you, this is one of my things, right? It's one of my buttons. It's one of my things. 
But even then, you know, like today, if that were repeated, I'd probably laugh about it now. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'd be like, you jerk. What was that about? You know? Yeah, we'd probably laugh laugh about a lot more stuff today. I mean, we just, yeah. we've grown. We talk about also. it on the podcast, make a big joke about it, and move on, you yeah. know? But it's just, it's just, it was one of those things, you yeah. know, where Satan, yeah, Satan saw an opportunity. And, it, and it's where even he says, you know, I don't want to give Satan an opportunity. Don't give him a foothold. Yeah. And maybe today, guys, it, it's interesting because I'm listening. You know, you, you, you do the podcast and then you listen. Um, I just wonder if today for somebody, because I was really jazzed up to talk about this next topic. And, and by the way, I have three series planned that Pete, I haven't even talked to you about, but that I'm like, man, we need to do these. But I was really jazzed up talking about field training because I've been writing about it all day today on the airplane. And I'm like, I'm so excited about it. But I, I kind of feel like today this is probably um, prophetic for someone out there where the, the, the Lord is just saying, don't give the enemy a foothold. Right. You know, it's kind of like when he says to, to Cain, Hey man, since crouching at your door, there's that opportunity where God's saying, Hey, if you got a foothold, man, come clean, talk to somebody. Um, you know, uh, even with us, man, like we're, you know, Pete and I are here, you know, um, if, if you guys Pey- need Peyton's help, here. You want- <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, <laughs> but you know, for, for someone here, man, rather than the enemy, take you down, you know, get, get some friends, get some, get some guys, get your wife and just, you know, get someone you trust a mentor and talk to somebody and say, Hey, I got this foothold and, uh, and it's not okay. You know, um, the Lord's really dealt with me and I've come a long way on my anger issues over the years. And the first thing I had to do was admit I had them. Right. Cause it really sucks when you're trying to be so perfect, you know, cause you're like, I'm not supposed to have those. I'm a pastor. I'm not supposed to have that. I'm, I, I love that line in, um, the movies that don't exist for Pete. Uh, it's actually the second one, um, where the, the, the uh, the, the Anakin Skywalker, when he's young, he says, and Pete, you have no idea what I'm talking about. She goes, uh, he says something like, I'm better than this because he's given into his anger. And she goes, or, you're, you're human or something like that. And he goes, but I shouldn't be. I'm a Jedi. And there's that whole dynamic that I think pastors falsely carry around that same kind of thing. Like we deny it and we hide it. And that's the thing he does all throughout is he gets in this habit of hiding things. They become footholds later mm. and end up turn them to the dark side and just destroy everything. So guys, that's, uh, that's, that's probably, you know, a good place to lay that down today and just say, you know, if you need to even get on your knees today, just say, Hey Lord, you know, um, cause the Lord knows it's not going to shock him, but get that stuff out before him, get it out in front of someone else. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, another thing too is, um, what about like, if you're not a math pastor, and uh, you got to take care of payroll and tithe and the IRS files. And, and, and you're tempted. You're tempted to grab a hammer and beat someone in the head over it. <laughs> don't yeah. do that. Pastor, yeah. don't go to jail. Don't kill somebody. Instead, get in touch with SimplifyChurch.com. Wait, that what was that? Care. SimplifyChurch.com. Oh, okay. They will take care. They'll take care of all your bookkeeping and tax compliance needs. <laughs> I kind of lost the. Uh, just let's. I didn't know where to go next. Let's just know? leave it hanging uh, right there. Church dot com. Uh, uh, something like that. And tell them Pete and Peyton sent you. Uh, see, that's the problem when you prepay for five years of sir for five years of advertising. <laughs> it's the new one that threw me off. <laughs> they have a new one. Oh, the the one from the beginning. The other ad. Yeah, it's like we're out of sync now. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're so funny. Well, uh, segue. Yeah, with that, guys, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Church Planner Podcast. <laughs> we do hope you'll be back. They will get good again. <laughs> <laughs> and well, remember, hey guys, thanks for joining us. This has been Peyton Jones and Pete Mitchell reminding you if you want to reach ones nobody's reaching, you need to go where nobody's going and do what nobody's doing. Please send all hate mail to Peyton at churchplannermag.com. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks for joining us for another weekly episode of the Church Planner Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Peyton Jones. We'd love to hear your comments on this episode of the Church Planner Podcast. Visit us online and let us know what you thought at churchplannerpodcast.com. If you subscribe to us via iTunes and have enjoyed the podcast, leave us a positive review. The more positive reviews we receive in iTunes, the more iTunes will promote us to other church planners who would benefit from this show. This podcast is brought to you by the Church Planner Magazine, which is available in the iTunes newsstand or online via churchplannermagazine.com. Thank you.